Hello and welcome back to a beautiful sunny London. We're going to discuss the Riksbank now because the Swedish National Bank has been coming under increased scrutiny recently because of its inflation targeting and also there are some ideas it might introduce some sort of currency cap much like Switzerland did. But I've been discussing these ideas with Alistair Cotton from Currencies Direct. <laughs> Let's start by talking about the BRICS Bank. I think it's an interesting way into the Eurozone story. Yeah. Uh, there's lots of uh, speculation, calls from analysts saying that the BRICS Bank needs to do something about inflation and also, well, the lack of inflation and also the strength of the Swedish krona. Yes. Um, do they have the power, being such a small central bank, to really be effective? Um, good question. I would say no against the ECB. Um, and that's, in normal times, they probably would be able to do enough. But because the ECB is undertaking this massive easing program, um, they're sort of up against uh, a wall of money, effectively. So um, they, can, they can try their best. Um, but the best thing that they can use is the, is the exchange rate to try and influence the exchange rate. That's, that's going to be their way out of this. However, it's not probably something that they're um, considering at the moment. This morning, the data out was, um, was positive for, for from, from the Riks Bank, we've got a little bit of inflation in, in Sweden, so it's making their their job a little bit easier. But they are really up against it. They're sort of it's the beggar our neighbour policies that the ECB and all this easing is is hurting countries like Sweden in particular. Yeah, let's be honest though that the, the Swiss National Bank, much more powerful central bank, basically just held their hands up saying they couldn't fight it anymore. Uh, Denmark's also really struggling. Yeah. It just seems that if these central banks can't do it, then I don't see why the Riksbank Bank could. I think this, the Swedish one is a particularly interesting case because it's a privately owned central bank. They're a private shareholder. So if they pull the plug on an easing policy, then they have the, 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 the SMB has to respond. So, I mean, the Danish central bank is a wholly owned subsidiary of the state, as is the Riksbank Bank as well. So I think they've got a bit more ammunition to help. Um, the, the more interesting point is whether this inflation targeting that they're all focusing on is, is the correct policy really in light of asset bubbles that, that, that quantitative easing and, and all this easing is causing. This is a very flippant question but isn't it a fact that Sweden and Denmark might as well just join the euro because they don't really control everything within there, but they can't control what's happening in Europe, so they might as well just join the euro. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a very interesting question. It depends. It really depends. <laughs> and the reason is, is because it, if it's in their economic interest, they absolutely should do. But the, the, part, the, line, the line of least resistance, if the, their economies are struggling, is for external devaluation via the exchange rate. And they need to be able to, in my opinion, keep on to that uh, by, by keeping their own currency. All right, let's talk about the euro. Um, I want to talk to you about the Hellenic Financial Stability Fund. That's where uh, Greece has found half a billion euros that they can uh, yeah. grab to, to fund their yeah. uh, their debt and their government payments. Um, how do you see this playing out over the next day or so? Because uh, we have this really key meeting in Brussels uh, with Greek officials and they're trying to come up with some ideas to try and save some money for Greece. Uh, so again, I think this is total posturing on both sides. I think we've got um, the, the Greeks on, on one side saying, oh no, we definitely can't pay, blah, blah, blah. And the East be saying yes you will pay yes you will um, this is going to go on for months and months and months I don't see this as any any in any way different to what's been going on we've got the uh, the bail the existing bailout running out in four months what my gut feeling is is that Greece will stay inside the euro purely because it's in Germany's interest for it to do it for do so and so we're just going to get a very very slow play out of this um, this whole situation where that gets kicked and kicked and kicked and kicked down the road and eventually Greece is able to sort of re negotiate its debt in terms of uh, linking it to growth or something like that. Uh, but I think that could be sort of five, six years away before we get to that stage. M the point is Greece will stay in the Eurozone. Yeah, so, so what about, what do you think about the, the, the mentality from the Greek government? Uh, we saw Cypras again raise the spectre of World War II, saying Germany needs to pay back money, which it hasn't already done. What, what, what do you think that says about mentality from the Greeks? Uh, I'd say that's more about uh, domestic pressures than any external pressures from the, from the Troika. Um, their election pledges, Dave, not not fulfilled really. So it's it could be a case of them trying to you know play to their domestic um, audience. Eventually, if they're not able to succeed in reducing the debt, which is one of their key key election pledges, it may be that we have another election, and then things get very interesting indeed. At the moment, I think we're sort of in that lukewarm area where things are going along nicely for both sides, yeah. and it's more more politics and, and posturing rather than anything important. Yeah. So I'm going to finish with the same question I'm asking everyone at the moment. Yeah. 
statement. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's how low with the euro go. Uh, people keep trying to give me answers, uh, but they don't really know. Yes. Uh, so so what you, what's your take on it? My, my finger in the wind estimate <laughs> would be, um, well, parity is, is a nailed on certainty. So I'm going to go for uh, 0.9 against uh, the dollar. Well, thank you to Alistair for at least having a go at trying to work out how low the euro will go. Stay tuned to Duke's Copy TV for more developments on that front and much more. But for now, goodbye.